In the modern day of gaming, we'll find tabs everywhere. No, not those kind of tabs, the kind of tabs we see in professional notebooks. Or, more accurately, the ripped up pieces of post-it notes you stuck to the end of your much cheaper, much crappier notebook to easily flip between page sections. These tab systems are usually seen in options menus to switch between different settings or sometimes between different front-end screens entirely. And, in a fine moment of full-on verisimilitude, some games even go the whole hog and re-represent the skeuomorphic design by actually having literal pages to flip through. Either way, it's clear that tabs are a pretty common occurrence. Unfortunately, Unity doesn't have any kind of tab system out of the box. The closest thing that exists is the toggle system, but I've always found it to be less than ideal. So, if you're looking to add some page flipping, tab switching action into your project, you're going to need to roll your own solution. Hey there, I'm Matt, and welcome to Game Dev Guide. In this video, we're going to take a look at how to build a dynamic tab system by extending Unity's UI tools. We're going to build a tab button script that blends some of Unity's button functionality with our own active tab state. We're also going to build a controller component that manages groups of tabs, as well as handle some of the default behaviors we might expect from our tab system such as switching through different pages of a UI panel based on the currently selected tab. So let's get started. Okay, so I've put together a little demo scene here. I'm just using Kenny's RPG UI pack and an RPG icon pack from the asset store. As you can see, it's just a basic layout for an inventory screen. Over here, we have our tab area, which is just five different image game objects we want to make tabs out of. We've also got five individual pages for each of the tabs. As we press each tab button, we'd like to switch the corresponding game object on and turn the others off. We could do this by adding a button component to each of our tabs and then setting the logic for each button, telling it which page to turn off or on, but this is incredibly tedious and time consuming. If we were to add another tab in here, we'd have to go through the whole process again, so it doesn't really scale well. What we'd ideally like to do is build a controller script that manages each of these tabs and toggles their state whenever a new tab is selected or interacted with. At the same time, we're going to need a script that designates a game object as a tab button so our controller knows what script to manage. So, in our tab area here, let's create a new script called tab group. Then let's select one of the children here and create a new script called tab button. While we're here, let's give both of these scripts a nice icon. Let's go over here and select our script in the project window. We'll go over here, choose other, and then I'll just choose this tab icon image. And for this one, I'll set the tab group image. Now notice how the icon has changed in the project window here. And if we go back onto our game object, we can see it's now got this nice icon here in the inspector. It's just a little bit of flair, but I also find it quite nice when I'm working with a series of connected scripts. Creating some uniform icons can really help visualize relationships between certain scripts and components. So now that we've got our scripts, let's start building our tab workflow. First, let's open up our tab group script. In the top here, let's add a list of tab buttons. Then let's replace this with a public method called subscribe, which takes in a type of tab button. Then when the first button subscribes to our group, let's create the list. And then let's add the button to our list. So now we have a tab group component that our tabs can subscribe to. Let's also add three methods that will control our tabs. Let's create an onTabEnter method that takes in a tab button. An onTabExit method that takes in a tab button. And finally, an onTabSelected method that also takes in a tab button. These methods are going to change the state of our buttons whenever one of our tabs is interacted with, but we'll leave them empty for now. Next, let's add some functionality to our tabs themselves. Let's open up our tab button script. Firstly, let's add a reference to a tab group, 
which we'll set in the inspector. Let's also add a reference to our background image on our tab. This is going to be switched by our tab group based on whether or not our tab is selected. We'll add a require component attribute to the top here to guarantee that an image is part of our button. And in our start method, let's assign the image using get component and then tell our tab button to subscribe to the tab group. Now we need to tell our tabs to talk to the tab group whenever they're interacted with. While we could simply derive our script from the button class and access the click events in there, I don't really want all the functionality of the button component and I want more fine grain control over the different button event states. Fortunately, there's a really easy way to hook into the event system and execute code when a specific mouse event occurs over UI. Up the top here, if we add Unity Engine systems into our usings, we can then access the iPointerEnter handler, iPointerClick handler, and the iPointerExit handler interfaces. By implementing these on our script, Unity will now call this code when any of these three events occur on our UI element. So let's now tell our tab group when these events occur by calling the methods we set up earlier. Back in our tab group, let's have the controller toggle the state of our tabs based on which one is selected. Up the top here, let's add a sprite for when a tab is idle. Let's also add a sprite for when a tab is hovered and another sprite for when a tab is selected. Now I'm using a sprite swapping method here, but you could easily have these as colors instead if you preferred. Let's write a new method called reset tabs that we'll use to set all of our tabs to idle. And in here, we'll create a for each loop on all of our tab buttons. And for each button, we'll set the background sprite to idle. Now, we'll add this as the first line to each of our on tab methods here. Then we'll set the sprite on each tab button based on the event. So for on tab enter, we'll use our hover sprite. And for on tab selected, we'll use our selected sprite. Now, if we go back into Unity, let's set up our sprites on our tab group. So we'll use this one for the idle sprite, this one for the hover sprite, and let's use this one for the selected sprite. Then let's also add the tab button script to our other tabs here, and select them all, linking them to the tab group. And when we play, you can see our tab sprites all swap nicely. The only problem is our selected tab also resets itself when the system is interacted with again. So we need to store our currently selected tab in the system. At the top of our tab group here, let's create a selected tab reference. And when a tab is selected, we'll assign that as our selected tab before the reset method. We'll then go into our reset tabs method and tell the method to skip over the currently selected tab. And finally, we'll also tell our enter method to only change the sprite if the tab isn't already selected. Now, if we go back into Unity and try it out, we can see that the system now has a reference to our selected tab. Lovely, that's looking great. So with the button visuals working, we want to add some default behavior into our system. The most likely use case for a tab layout like this is to switch between game objects in the UI. So let's add that functionality into our system. At the top of our tab group script, let's add a list of game objects called objects to swap. Then in our tab selected method, let's get the index of our tab in the list. The idea here is that the order of the game objects in this list will be the same as the child index of each of our tabs. So let's create a new int called index and get the sibling index from the transform of our tab button. Now we'll iterate through our game objects. For int i equals zero, i is less than objects to swap dot count, i plus plus. And then here, if i equals the index, we'll set the game object as active.
Otherwise, we'll disable it. Now, back in Unity, if we assign our pages from our page area here into our tab group, and then hit play, you can see we have a functional tab system that keeps an active tab and also swaps to the appropriate page for each tab. But Matt, what if we need more than just swapping between pages in a panel, you might be saying. That is a good point, Avid Viewer. Well said, go you. Maybe rather than swapping a page when one of these tabs is activated, we actually want to control audio options or execute some kind of method on another script. To do this, we'll need to add a callback on our button and have our tab group control activate the callbacks whenever a state change occurs. Let's go into our tab button script and add two new methods, a select method and a deselect method. Then in our tab group, in the onTab selected method, before we assign our selected tab, let's check if a tab already exists and tell it it's now deselected by calling the deselect method on it. Then after assigning the new tab, let's call the select method. Now, whenever the tab changes, the correct method is called. The last thing to do is add some functionality in here for the selection. We want our tab system to be flexible, so we don't really want to hard code anything. So there's two ways we could handle this. One thing we could do is hook this callback into a larger event system, which I've actually covered how to do in a previous video and recommend giving it a watch after this video if you haven't already seen it. However, for now, let's create a bespoke Unity event on the tab itself so each callback can be individually controlled in the inspector. At the top of our tab button, let's create a public Unity event called onTabSelected and another Unity event called onTabDeselected. Then, let's invoke each of these from inside our select and our deselect methods. like this. Back in Unity, we can now do anything we want when our tabs change state by simply adding a new callback here. I've got this little heart icon that I'd like to toggle on and off with each active tab, so let's just go through and set that up. And with that set up, let's hit play. As you can see, our tab system now calls our selected and deselected functions on our tabs. While I'm sure there's a lot more you can do with a system like this, hopefully this is a great starting point for building a more complex and more flexible tab system for your UI. Let me know what you think about this in the comments below, but that's pretty much it for now. If you've enjoyed this video, be sure to hit that like button. And if you're new to the channel, be sure to subscribe if you'd like to see more tips, tricks, and tutorials from me. And feel free to check out some of the other videos on the channel. There's also a Discord server for Game Dev Guide, which is a great place to chat about the videos, gaming, or anything in general with other community members. So you're welcome to join and hang out. Simply click the link below for that one. As always, thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you again next time.